Tonight, we are going to try another hard to find release because, well, I locked out at Kroger. Yeah, you heard me right. Kroger. Yeah, your grocery store. <laughs> My grocery store. I went there. They said, hey, you want to buy this? I said, yes. Yes, I do. And that is Wilderness Trail 8-Year. So you know Wilderness Trail. They're actually, you know, some people thought they were craft, but they're actually like top three on amount distilled every year. Volume. And volume. And so now we're up to eight years with their product. They had a six-year two years ago. Uh, It got some pretty good reviews. Everybody liked it. I know six plus two, eight. Who would have thought? Like, I can math. Can't English? I can math. Um, it's Brian when you need him. I know. True to form, it is 100 proof, uh, bottled and bond uh, style. And it even says bottled and bond on the label. So I'm excited about that. But it is the rye mash bill, not the weeded mash bill. And we'll see how it is. Uh, if you've watched the channel, you know that I have been a fan of Wilderness Trail, especially some of their uh, single barrel stuff. Uh, Chuck has been a little bit more on the fence, not always the biggest fan. So it'll be fun tonight. Yeah, I got a rye single barrel. That's that's okay. It's, it's very heavy rye. And then um, I have a, a weeded as well. Weeded six year, I think. Yeah. And if you've been having a hard time finding barrels, bottles uh, this year, uh, there is a glass shortage. And that is why the eight year comes in the new shape, the hourglass shape uh, bottle. So that was, I mean, another reason I had to pick it up because I was like, oh, cool. That's like, kind of different. I like it. Yeah. I mean, the nose I do find delightful. That nose is really, I'm getting this uh, a str- medicinal cherry note. It's, uh, I mean, it's not overly like cough syrupy. It's a, it's a candy, candy cherry. And I'm getting a strong smoke. Like, I almost not, get some, like still a little bit of that, like young grayness, but it's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's like the minute it, it, it rises up, it, it, it goes away. So it's, it's yeah. not the dominant note at all. It's almost you could interpret it as more of a rye spice coming through the rye note, like some a little bit of that herbal herbalness. Yeah, I get a smoky, dusty, medicinal cherry is what I get, and I can go with the dusty cherry. Yeah, yeah, I, that's. It is, I mean, it's not quite as um, you know well balanced with older oak that you get off of like the Weller products. Not uh, grant, granted, this isn't or Buffalo Trace products. There we go. Yeah. I should say that because this isn't we did. Um, but that's, it's getting close, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's giving you that cherry note. Um, and with a little bit more time in the barrel, you're going to probably develop some of those, uh, richer oak notes to go along yep. with it. So c- kind of cut some of that or just balance, blend it with a little bit of that, uh, more richer, sweeter oak, um, along with that cherry. note. Maybe a slightly higher proof would bring a little bit more out on the nose because it is cut down to a hundred. So if you had it up, uh, and I'm not even talking like 120 range or anything crazy like that, but if you had it maybe like 108 range, uh, it could be interesting. So Wilderness Trail is one of those two that does the sweet mash process. So what that means is every time they distill, they wipe everything completely clean and start over every single time uh, opposed to sour mash process, which you pour some of the old dissolute uh, or not dissolute, the old mash back in. Uh, so it's, and it's also one of the places that does a lower entry proof, which if you follow the channel, if you follow a lot of whiskey tubers uh, or Fred Minnick, uh, there is becoming a belief that lower entry proof leads to better bourbon. So, yeah, higher water content has more interaction with with the wood in the early process. So it's particularly for some craft distillers. I think you know the idea is that it ages quicker, mm-hmm. um, doesn't have to be in the barrel as long as um, some of the higher entry proofs. But you know, Michter's is a is a distillery that does slow entry proof. Um, yeah, peerless. 
uh, hard truth. So I'll say, man, on the palate, I get a ton of sweet and an underlying cherry, which is interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a candy sugar sweet. I was gonna challenge you to say when you when when it's a lot of sweet, what do you define that um, that sweet? But it, to me, it's it's almost just like a like a cane sh- sugar, a, a simple syrup kind of sweetness. But I get it, it. I get a little bit of that to start, just like that's all I get. But it's very quick, and then it, and then these notes of the higher rye bourbon kind of come in so you get a little bit of that spiciness um that you black pepper that you kind of expect with a rye spice and then that's what lingers to me into the finish it's a nice it's a nice continuation through that palette to finish for me that especially at 100 proof like this is Mm -hmm. this this drinks quite nicely all the way through just from the nose through the through the finish i'm yeah i don't know what you said or what I thought about or anything like that, but all I'm getting now, and this is the first time, like I can just like absolutely a hundred. You don't know what I said. What are you, Brian? Not listening to me or what? Identify this note. It is cherry Kool-Aid. That is exactly what it is. Like the, uh, just whatever it came in the Kool-Aid packets, cherry. flavor. Exactly. I mean, that is what I get. You get that sweetness, uh, the not the powdered sugar the just the regular white sugar and then a little bit of cherry notes it is so cherry kool-aid and that's what um now after that i get a little bit of that rye spice that i was describing through that into that palette or into the finish but the drying sensation after so after that leaves what i get is it goes back to that cherry note Mm -hmm. um and that's what what lingers on and um after that pepper kind of departs yeah yeah you do get some oak you do get some pepper in there um but yeah like i'm i i like it i think it's pretty good uh what's the what's the price point on this uh currently it is going for 80 bucks uh so i mean 80 bucks i again so my go-to thing that i always go with where i got it from i can't completely remember but it is what i go with $10 $10 per year, I think is a pretty fair price. So they've got it priced right there and everything I'm drinking, I'm enjoying. So 80 bucks, I view it right on par with where it should be. What do you think of availability moving forward? So it's like you, you were right on the front line of this. So they're just starting to release this, but long-term, like this is their, their vision to, to have this as a standard offering. Yeah, I think so. Um, they didn't really say much. I mean, I don't know. In your area, have you seen the Wilderness Trail six year at all? Oh, yeah. 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 So maybe that's what they're going to go with is like, so they put the six year out, then they go with the eight year. Maybe hopefully in two years, they'll put a 10 year out. And like, I'd be okay if they just stopped at the 10 year. Uh, I don't think you need to go much higher than that. But maybe they pull away the six year line and just continue with the eight year line. And I think that's a really good way to do things. If that's what they did and other distilleries uh, in the future should follow that method. Uh, But I'm also going to say like at 80 bucks, if they stopped at the eight year, I wouldn't be completely disappointed with that either. It's really good. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're going to add two years and add $20, maybe I'd still be interested because you guys know my price bracket. Um, but at 80 bucks, if, or if you're adding two years and then $40 or, you know, $50 to this, yeah. I mean, th- this eight year, I'm just trying to think in my head, like, what else does it compare to at, I wish we had this for our bottle and bond bracket or March madness bracket that we did. Jeez, that was, that was two years ago now, but cause I think this could, this had a chance to, to win it. Right. You think about the other bottled and bonds in the market. Um, I was just about to pour my William heaven Hill to see how it compared. Um, but I bet you pour like a, a Henry McKenna. Mm-hmm. This is going to hang. And now yeah. generally Henry McKenna, lower MSRP, but also difficult to find. Um, th- I'm really enjoying this. This is the first wilderness trail product. I can say flat out. I want this on my shelf. Yeah. At a hundred proof eight year. This hangs. This yeah, is I really mean, good. It's a buy. Like you have to have this on your shelf. 
Yeah, the, where I was going to go as far as comparison was more to the Buffalo Trace products that everybody hunts like crazy, mm-hmm. aren't available. So go down the list, the Blanton's Eagle Rare, um, all of those. Like to me, this is well yeah. definitely better than Blanton's. I think we could argue about the Weller lineup, but um, it, and especially as a as you said, if it's available offering, like this is this is it. The other the other place I go, you know, I'm an MGP lover, Ross and Squib lover. Um, yeah. But you think about all those craft distilleries that are sourcing, sticking their label on it. It's a six-year product. I'm taking this. Yeah. And, and just... generally, the, the price point of those five to six-year MGPs is 80 bucks. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this Wilderness Trail. This is fantastic. Yeah. I mm-hmm. love the sweetness, the cherry, the fruit. It, it gives you still some of that rye spice where, you know, Brian would still be a fan. Yeah. I think this, this is your night opener. Um, mm-hmm. If you want something to, or just a daily drinker for, for most. Uh, but if you're, it's one of those and it hits everything. It can be a palate opener for somebody that likes cast strength. It can be where it's just a better, more flavorful version of somebody that if, if you're at a, if you'd like an 80 to a 90 proof bourbon, um, this is going to hit it as well. So to yeah. me, this is a, this is a straight buy. And once again, the most important part of everything is it just keeps showing that Wilderness Trail keeps getting better and better. And if you have not gotten on the Wilderness Trail train yet, eventually, it's going to happen in the next couple of years, this is going to be hard to find. The single barrels, people are going to figure out Wilderness Trail is good stuff. Because like we said, you can't find blends. You can't find the Buffalo Trace products because everybody jumps at it. Quit trying to find it. There's other good stuff out there. Be the yeah. first to get on that train. So then in 10 years, when you can't find it, you can start a YouTube channel and complain about how you can't find what used to be your daily drinker. And then feel pity with all of us. But get on the train before it leaves the station. It's some good stuff. And you know, if they come out with a wilderness trail 10. I'm going to be the first in line to buy that sucker because this thing is so good. I will definitely be in line to buy that 10 year. I'm looking forward to that aged product. Um, this is the, like I said, the first wilderness trail that I've said, I want this um, after tasting. So I'm looking forward to the next 10 years wilderness trail. Let's get some 10 to 15 year product. My wheelhouse. Right. I'll pay 150 bucks. I'll lock in. I'll lock in the bottle now. Let's, let's go. Yeah. Let's let We'll buy a barrel. We'll just let it age we'll buy a in your warehouse and we'll we'll just keep trying it along the way. Let's let's do this journey together. Together. <laughs> With that, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Stay neat. Power bourbon.